Hey guys, how's it going? We are down at the garden center today. I kind of had to switch gears a little bit. I had planned to do some planting in our own garden and we woke up to rain and it has been raining all day long, which has been absolutely glorious. Makes for a wonderful day to come down here and check out the latest load that just arrived full of herbs, which are all behind me. There are David Austin roses that were just potted up and a whole bunch of perennials that are actually still in the storage building out back. And the thing that I love about this load in particular when we get it every year, it's from Blooming Nursery. They grow a lot of their things cold, which means they're not growing them in any kind of a heated structure. It might be a protected structure from like extra wind, which might warm it up a little bit, but it's not artificially heated. So these plants are way tougher than those that are grown in a heated facility. So basically when they arrive, we can put them right outside and they're good to go. There's no picking them up and then babying them in a garage or, you know, know somewhere where it's a little bit warmer there's Monica she's actually working on the lavender right now I just can't wait to show you some of this stuff you guys like lavender mint have you ever heard of lavender mint I hadn't so exciting and this is just you know the first of many 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 loads like this typically this time of year I mean they're getting in three four loads a week and they will maintain that through June typically it kind of slows down in July when it gets super hot like above 100 July and August and then it picks back up again in September and uh, yeah just a constant stream of fresh, beautiful things. Front three tables, it looks like have smaller plants, looks like cauliflower, onions, artichokes, so we'll take a closer look. Herbs on these two tables, and then in the back, all those green pots, those are all the David Austins, which we will take a look at as well. But let's start right here. First one is dwarf marjoram. And isn't this a sweet little plant? Woo! even sweeter when it's in bloom right here. But this one's hardy down to zone five, and it's kind of a ground cover. About a foot tall is where it maxes out, and it can spread up to two feet but it's just this nice little soft cushion. A whole bunch of different kinds of mint up here. I'll show you my favorite ones actually on the back side. Uh, but this one is apple mint. It's got a really bold leaf structure, which I really like. And then there's chocolate mint, which is always a favorite. You can see one of them is already sold and they just got here like this morning. There's French peppermint. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. The lavender mint. So I just like to give the plant kind of a good rough up. It does have a floral lavender quality. That is crazy. We should probably grow one of these. It does get two to three feet tall and you know mint wants to just kind of take over. So we'd have to put it in a container. There's Moroccan mint, which has a really pretty kind of waffly leaf texture there. Persian mint already has a lot of good growth. Spanish mint. <laughs> I mean, who knew there was this many types? We'll come back to the front side, but I wanna continue on with our mint search here because this is, like I said, my favorite. This is the Swiss Ricola mint right here. And I think that this is the sweetest smelling, like almost like a spearmint, but sweeter. It's amazing. You know how some mints kind of have a very pungent, like astringent side. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's a very sharp kind of smell to it, even though you can smell the mint, but there's a sharpness. This one is just a soft sweetness, but it's very, very potent. I love it. Right next to that, there's some dark leaf oregano. The dwarf Greek oregano. I love this one and I love the little flowers. So an even shorter ground cover than the marjoram we just looked at. There's a golden oregano. This is a Hopley's purple oregano. Huh, 18 inches tall, 18 inches wide. That would be a fun one to grow. Sicilian oregano, variegated, oh, I like this one, variegated oregano. This is a fun type to use in containers, you guys. If you can pop some herbs in your spring containers for a fun uh, foliar accent, then you can pop them out and plant them in your landscape when you get ready for summer plants. So you kind of get two uses out of them and they look so pretty. Then we've got the Italian parsley right here. Back on the front side, we have borage. I will have borage until the day I die, I think, in my garden. I planted it with somewhere between three and five, four inch borage behind our chicken coop. Some of you guys might even know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, some years ago, it was maybe three or four years ago. And I don't know what I was thinking because I know what borage does in the garden. I really only needed to plant one in that space because those have just taken over that area. I'm constantly pulling them uh, with no mercy, like pulling as many of the roots out as I can. I mean, I still want borage there, but I have to really thin it out every year and I even have to dig some out. But they have beautiful light blue and pink blooms that taste like cucumbers. They're wonderful for cocktails, for garnishing. They're a really nice one to have. Oh my, there's a whole flat of catnip. Oh my goodness. I wonder what Russell and Cheddar would think of that. 
There's the chamomile, which I love this chamomile. I planted some of this on the west side of our garden, uh, kind of near our vegetable garden. And it smells like bubble gum. Mm. It just perfumes the air with that scent. I love it. And it grows out a foot, stays two to four inches tall. Hardy to zone four. It's amazing perennial. There's chives here. So that's regular chives. There's giant flower chives. Cilantro, the coriander, which I haven't ever used this as an herb. I usually just grow it in containers as an accent, foliage accent, because it's really unique. And curry is actually what you smell when you walk in the greenhouse right now. This is dwarf curry. It says offers a similar flavor and can be used to flavor meats and other dishes instead of curry. But it is a zone eight, so it's not hardy enough to live here throughout the year. We'd have to either plant it every year or, you know, maybe bring it inside. I've never tried this one as a house plant, but it would be worth a shot. Over here, we've got a bunch of candy onions, which I have a lot of these going in the greenhouse right now, as well as our white sweet Spanish. There are red onions. I probably buy one red onion a year, so I don't, I don't even grow them. There are some garlic plants down here. Snow crown cauliflower, artichokes, imperial star. These are just a little bit bigger than ours at home. Then on the back side, there's Walla Walla onions, which I also love. We're still eating off of ours from last year. And there's a whole bunch of these Sinetti, which are really pretty. Violet by color. And can we just like, look at this alyssum? It's huge. In fact, this one right here, this just looks like a brimming Easter basket. Isn't that beautiful? It's got kind of a pale yellow color, the alyssum which pairs just gorgeous with those violas. Oh, I love that. Right below it, there are some more herbs. We've got caraway right here, or caraway thyme, sorry. Caraway thyme, give you the full name there. French sorrel, which is actually a really wonderful green. We've used it to make soups, um, dips, all kinds of things. Back in the day, like 15 years ago, uh, we used to have three spring seminars every year in um, March, April, and May. Sometimes we did it in June, uh, but it seemed like the April or the May one was always based on herbs. And so my mom, sister, and I would always cook things that used herbs that we had in our gardens or here in the greenhouse. And one year we kind of focused on the sorrel and it was really kind of an eye-opening experience. Some of these herbs you might think, well, I'll just skip that because I don't really know a lot about it. Sometimes it's kind of forcing yourself to you know, research some recipes and try some things out to figure out some really wonderful new ways to use some of these plants. There's Burgarten Sage, which if you need a really fun, different hedge, these make for a gorgeous hedging plant, perennial hedging plant, you know, so it's not evergreen, but they've got just the most beautiful, they look like they're rough, like rough textured, but they're not, they're soft. And I love the color, just that very soft sage. A few different kinds of rosemary here. There's the Tuscan Blue, Irene Trailing, this is a Salem Rosemary, Bonnie Jean, right here, which has got kind of a twisty appearance. That's a neat one. Zone seven, zone eight, zone seven, zone seven. What is this one? This is an ARP Rosemary, zone six. So this one may survive in our area. And then a triple curled parsley right here. There are a few berries down here, some raspberries and blackberries that just, they had leafed out and it got really cold the other night, so they brought some of the more tender stuff in here. And raspberries are by no stretch a tender plant, but when they have been, you know, they have tender new growth in the spring and they're not acclimated or ready to go out in our 25 degree nights, uh, they'll bring stuff like that in here, like the magnolias. Those are tough enough to survive here, and if they bloom on our schedule, they're good. Uh, I typically, it seems like every year when the magnolias bloom here though, we get a weird, like cold snap that we're not expecting. And then the whole tree looks like it's full of like, you know, the blooms get brown and soggy and it just <laughs> looks like a huge mess. So I avoid them. Uh, but when they come in here, they stay nicer if you put them in the greenhouse. Winter thyme, there's spicy orange thyme. Isn't that just the neatest looking cushiony plant? Mm, it smells yummy too. Mm -mm -mm. Orange balsam thyme, narrow leaf French thyme. I like this one. Look at this. This is lime thyme and the gold lemon thyme. I also like to use these in containers. They've just got such a really neat look to them and then you can plant them out. Lavender scented thyme and the Dot Wells French thyme. I think in terms of looks, I mean, I love these for their uniqueness, but I love this plant. It looks very like robust. The leaves look more robust. The branching looks really nice. 
That's just a really pretty plant. All right, guys, let's take a quick look through these David Austin roses here. And I think they're either expecting a second load because this is not all of the ones that my mom ordered or she could have been zeroed out. That does happen sometimes if they just have a hard time getting a crop to produce as many as maybe they have sold. Princess Anne, a whole bunch of those. I love this one so much. St. Swithin, I don't, <laughs> it's a climber, 10 foot. I've got to figure out a spot to put some of these because this color is perfection to me. I love it. And I just realized that these are not all the same variety. These are the Almwick Rose, which are another really pretty pink. So I double checked at these two rows. This is the Silas Marner, which is also a pink one, but they just don't have their tags on them yet. More of the Alnwick Rose here. Ooh, the Lark Ascending. That one's kind of a apricot yellowy one, isn't it? No tag on that. Winchester Cathedral, beautiful pure white. Windermere, one of my favorite whites. I just love, love, love this one so much. I had these in our townhouse garden and I need to add some into our current garden. And there's Whistley here, right? Is that how you say it, Whistley 2008? Wisely, Wisley, the pink shrub rose. Really pretty color. There's some Akebia, the white flowered chocolate vine right here. Some of the blooms are just maybe wanting to open up. Oh, right down here. Oh, look at those. These are very productive, vigorous vines. They grow to about 20 feet tall and they do have a lightly fragrant bloom. It's more light right now because it's chilly in here when it warms up a little bit, the fragrance is more noticeable. A couple of beautiful tree roses. This is a uh, Julia Child with someone's name on it. Hmm. That one has my mom's name on it. <laughs> These are the Living Easy and Easy Going. 36 inch two for tree, awesome. Okay, more Princess Anne right here. The Molino, Molino, Molino really pretty. Lady of Shalott. Love this one so much. This one is a Gabriel Oak, which is a really intense pink. And then there's a Eustacea Vi, which is a really sweet, uh, kind of medium to light pink. And the last table over here, what have we got? More Eustacea Vi, the Emily Bronte. There's the Eglantine. Oof. I'm probably butchering these names. That's also a really pretty pink one. There's Charles Darwin, soft, beautiful yellow. I love it with the ladies mantle around it. I think that's a beautiful pairing. And Benjamin Britten, kind of a pink red. And another gorgeous spring basket. Oh, I love those so much. So many beautiful things out here. I can't even describe the smell in this greenhouse right now. It's just amazing. And it's also amazing that in just about a month or so, you will hardly, I mean, you'll be able to walk in here, but there's no way that customers can ever bring carts in here. Everybody has to park them outside the greenhouse because it gets so full of beautiful things, which we're gonna go take a look at more stuff here right now. Let's head outside. Okay, got my coffee in my hood. We're gonna come back in here though with a box so we can load up on some of these things. I think they've set the fountain up since the last time we were down here. It's got a really, really nice sound. So water comes out this top piece and also out this side, down into the basin. No splattering, that's awesome. Oh, this one's pretty. Look at that. A circle of birds. Okay, here's a big bunch of lavender. Yes. There's the Grosso lavender, which this one gets like two to three feet tall and wide, and it's an intermediate type lavender. Produces really long stems up above the foliage canopy, so they're really great for cutting, like cutting bundles of. Now this one is a Buena Vista English lavender. I do not know a lot about this one. Two by two. Zone five. The nice thing about English lavenders is that the scent is typically a lot softer and sweeter. Um, it's not quite as pungent, like in your face sort of a smell like some of the other lavenders can have. I think it's only lightly sprinkling. I think we can handle that. Anyway, yeah, they just have a very, very good scent to them. There's Hidcoat Giant right here, which this one wants to get like, oh boy, three to three and a half feet tall and probably about three feet wide. It's a huge lavender variety. This is Dilly Dilly, which I love the bright silvery color of the leaves. See how some of them have more of a green and this definitely has more of that silvery blue. But this one stays a little bit smaller too, one to two feet tall and about that wide. Oh, there's another English lavender called Premier, two by two and a half. Okay, my goodness, there's just so many. There's Betty's Blue English lavender, there's Provence lavender, there's the white French lavender, 
That's a zone five. Hmm. That's a beauty. A load came in that had forsythias in bloom. All of our forsythias here that are like already planted in the ground, none of them are even close to in bloom yet. I wanted to walk over here though because look at this color. Oh my goodness. That totally drew me over here. A glacier violet rock crest. Six inches tall, 12 inches wide, zone five. Blooms in early spring. Who would be pretty to have a big drift of that somewhere. Something I'm currently loving are the yellow twig dogwoods. I want to add more of those into our landscape for winter interest more than anything else. A whole table full of sedums and semper vivums here. I love that one. It's called Jade Rose. On these two tables right here, these are perennials that they've wintered over here. Like those were all that was left over last year. And a lot of people seek those plants out in particular because they have wintered over one season in a nursery container to boot. They're usually a super strong plant. Um, so there are certain, like certain customers that always come in and that's what they want. Like show me your pile from last year. I'm noticing these butterfly blue pincushion flowers in particular. They are so healthy and pincushion flowers are an amazing perennial. I think they just bloom all season long. I never see mine without blooms on them. And I don't feel like I have to deadhead them because they don't look messy. Love plants like that. Okay, this is where we're heading, right here. There's an open door. Here's some fun stuff. I'm gonna set my coffee down so I can focus. Okay, we're gonna take a quick walk through these perennials and I'll probably just name them off quick and then we'll have a small pile in the end, I think, to take home. Right here, there's some Russell's Jerusalem Sage. This is a flow mess. I planted some of these last year and they're coming back beautifully. It was my first time ever growing them. Prairie Dusk Penstemon has a really pretty tall pink bloom. Oh my goodness, so many things. There's soapwort, achillea. There's an Everlast Burgundy Dianthus, which is all butted up. Ooh, the Armeria. That's fun. The Thrift. Looks like that's gonna have giant flowers. The Iberus. This is a Purity Candy Tuft. Iberus is the botanical, I think, yeah. Always a really pretty show in the spring. Oh, there's more lavender. Some of the Bulls English. More Penstemon. This one has more of a red bloom. Ooh. There's some lambs here. We might need to grab some of these. Strawberry Seduction Yarrow, Echinacea Red Ombre, Coreopsis, Red Elf Coreopsis, some Della Sperma Ice Plant, a couple different varieties of Gallardia. There's red and yellow Yarrow here, and some Salvia. There's some Daylilies, the Stella de Oros. There's some Rock Crest, Snow Cat just coming into bloom right here. More salvia, more daylilies. There's some foxglove, bleeding hearts. Ooh, vinca in full bloom, look at that. That's gorgeous. It's a double frilly pink, clementine rose. There's some lamium, which I love, love lamium. So this one is the Elizabeth de Haas. So you can see the green leaf with the silver stripe down the middle versus the pink pewter, which has got the mostly silver with green margin. I think they're both gorgeous. Ooh, here's a saxifrage I don't have. It has red blooms. I just think they're the sweetest little fairy plants ever. There's some creeping Veronica and some Georgia blue Veronica right here, which you can see some blooms, so pretty. Blue fortune hyssop, I planted some of this last year and really loved it. That's a good one. It's got kind of iridescent looking coloring on its leaves. And the blooms are a very soft lavender kind of powdery blue. So pretty. Butterfly blue pincushion flowers. There's an Evelyn salvia, which is a soft pink. Nothing in my mind beats the pink profusion salvia though. It's the best. Snowcap Shasta daisies. There's some fun stuff in this row. And Greenaway lamium, which has more of a yellow variegation. There's sedums. There are these sun rows, the Wisley um, primrose there. Silver Kisses Daisy, I have never, never grown. I don't think I've ever seen this plant. That's really interesting. Zone four, drought tolerant, long blooming evergreen. Four inches tall, eight to 10 inches wide. Ooh, we might need to try some of these, how fun. And the fun thing about this perennial program in particular is that they mix flats. So they do half a flat of lamium, half a flat of sedum, half a flat of this and that. So you can try out a whole bunch of different things instead of needing to commit to you know the entire flat. Some pretty ajugas, the black scallop, the chocolate chip, more yarrow and GMs, I think. Sangria GMs. Look at those sweet pansies. Blue delphiniums. Over here, lavenders, salvias, uh, cat mint, sedum. There's creeping Jenny right here, the golden kind. I love this one right here. This is the, I don't know how to pronounce it, sedum. 
Look at how gorgeous that is. Hardy's to zone four. Oh, this is fun. Raspberry Splash Pulmonaria. Ooh, that's a neat one. Might need to try that. Silver Carpet Lamb's ear. So the Helen Von Stein that we just looked at has much bigger boulder leaves and this one's much smaller. Oh, and this one right here, this is a Pulmonaria as well. It's called Silver Scimitar. Look at the leaves. There's so much silver in those. And then the buds are pink, you can see right there. And they open to blue flowers. That one's just got a really unique leaf variegation. Gallon size of the Iberis. Ooh. Oh, I like that columbine, that's beautiful. Okay, we didn't look at every single plant in here because I think that would take us just way too long. Uh, but you can kind of get an idea of the types of things that were in this load. And it's just so fun to see fresh plants and plants that are almost in bloom and plants that we can put outside. Now our forecast right now, we actually had snow flurries this morning. Um, but it's not, it's not super cold outside. And of course, you know, now it's turned to rain. We have one night that's in the 20s, 27. The rest of them look to be hovering around freezing and there's a couple in the upper 30s, but we're getting closer to being able to put some stuff out. It's just been such a long spring, which, you know, we really needed. We needed to have a reprieve and have more moisture. So we're all loving it and we're just kind of reveling in it. And we've had time to do some things that we normally don't have time to do. So it's just amazing. We're gonna go grab a box, maybe a cart, and we'll load up. I think we could fill this one up, no problem. If you guys wanna make the jobs for the people at the garden center way easier, when you're picking out plants out of flats like this, try to pick every other one out. So instead of taking them from just the front of the flat, which seems like the easiest way to do it, try picking them out like this, because that's what we have to do anyway. We come along, you know, and reorganize plants, space them out. But boy, if I found flats left like this, that would have made me so happy when I worked down here. Saved me some time. I feel like we need one of these lavender mint. Swiss for cola. I've got some herbs. Ooh, it smell what does that smell like to bubble you gum. yes it's bubble gum isn't it absolutely yeah. oh and then i think that the spicy orange thyme would be a fun ground cover just for Smells i good. like the soft cushiony yeah i like that too yeah. kind of like moss or something yeah be even prettier I think we should take a quick spin through the shade house because I do see some fresh stuff in here. Oh yeah, some beautiful bleeding hearts. Those came in on the same order. Sea Heart Brunnera. So we have a lot of the Queen of Hearts and Jack of Diamonds which have the huge, big, bold leaves and I love them. But it's kind of fun to have some that have a little bit smaller leaves on them as well. Just a little bit of a different texture. There's some hellebores there. Whoa, vintage blush. Look at the color of those leaves. My goodness. Winter glow. And that's pretty much how my hostas are looking right now too. Oh, look at the contorted filbert though. Look at how pretty that is. Way prettier without leaves, I think, than with leaves. Love the twisty stems and these catkins are so pretty. One of my goals this year is to up my ground cover game. You guys know out in the South Garden, we're just in, this will be year three, season three of starting to develop that area. And the first year it was just mostly, you know, putting in water lines and things like that. We put in a few things, a few trees, a few evergreens. Last year, we really hit it hard with perennials, more shrubs, some big trees. Uh, and so those will just start going here this year. But, you know, we haven't done a ton in terms of like lower growing things and trying to create a map so that we don't have to mulch as much and we don't have to weed as much. And it just, it cools the whole area down when you have a mat of green rather than seeing soil. So this is a beautiful collection. So let's get it all loaded up in the truck. We'll take it home, get it out in the greenhouse, and then I'll run through all the varieties that I ended up with today.
are back home and is this not the freshest looking tabletop you've about ever seen? Oh, <laughs> Russell, Russell, <gasps> oh, Russell wants to be involved in just about everything that goes on in and around our house, but I'm loving these. So let's start here on this end of the table. I got five of these really sweet Georgia Blue Veronica or Speedwell is the common name. These can take a little bit of foot traffic. They attract all the pollinators and I can't remember what zone they are, but zone four, hardy to negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So they bloom like this in the spring, you know, the really sweet blue blooms with the white eye. And then the foliage is green now and it turns red in the fall. So we really get multiple seasons of interest out of this one perennial. It also says it's evergreen. We'll see how that goes. It does not look like it would be an evergreen to me. And some perennials that are supposed to be evergreen like hellebores and tukura here are not. And we have to cut them back and just have them grow back fresh, which is fine. Um, but this one also likes full sun, six inches tall, 18 inches wide. That's gonna be a fun one. Next, we have some soapwort and I got Two, four, six. I thought I got seven of those. I had a little patch of this soapwort behind the gazebo, and it was one of the perennials that I did not have time to transplant. I think that a friend got a little piece of it, but I would have loved to save that plant. I'm really happy to have these again, and I know they're super common, but boy, when they bloom, it's like early summer when they bloom. It was a carpet of beautiful pink. I think I even took a picture. I'll have to see if I can find it. Uh, but it, they're absolutely worth planting. They're so pretty. And they get pretty good size. I mean, they spread out two feet, four to eight inches tall. They're really good to go over like low walls and things like that, rock garden kind of situations. They're drought tolerant. And zone four, like the sun, there's the flowers. Then we have the spicy orange thyme, which is the needle leaf pine, but they're very, very soft. This one can also take a little bit of light foot traffic and it gets two feet wide as well. Zone five, drought tolerant evergreen. That's gonna be a great one. Blooms in the summertime. And then we've got a few of these Trinig, Trinig chamomile, which I think I got seven. I got five of the thyme, seven of the chamomile. These just smell so dang good. And I think I kind of talked about these a bit when we were in the greenhouse, but I just love them. Right behind that, we've got one of the lavender mint and then one of the Swiss recola mint, both of which will go in containers. Right here we have five, one, two, three, four, five of the pink chintz creeping thyme. So another summer bloomer. This one doesn't get quite as big, just a foot wide, one to three inches tall. Evergreen, drought tolerant. Typically the pollinators really like these. In fact, these tags are awesome. I love it when they have all of these things right here, just so you can see at a glance what the plant has to offer. And then I just picked up three of the creeping Veronica because there wasn't all that many of them and I didn't want to take them all. So I think I left, I don't know, six or seven of them there. Uh, but this one says evergreen as well. One inch, one inch tall, you guys. Like you can see if I turn this over, how it's kind of going over the edge there. So it's just this really spongy, soft layer of glossy green leaves spreads out a foot and a half zone four can take moist soils I've got a perfect spot for these and then this one is probably the one I'm most excited about the nutmeg creeping thyme look at the color of these leaves first off the leaves are tiny they stay really short so again another one inch tall plant they spread out 12 inches but they do have kind of that bronzy colored tint to them super glossy i love them and the color of the blooms that is going to be just so pretty i'm so excited to see that one and then the birch hybrid campanula right here i have some of these and i'm hoping that they survived the building of our rock wall uh, because they were right by our kitchen door i do have pictures of what these do twice in a season i mean they just get covered in these massive amounts of purple flowers you can see they do sun or shade so they're a super versatile perennial a zone four yes yeah zone four so hardy down to negative 30 evergreen six inches tall ten inches wide i did note notice that mine kind of rooted in lightly around kind of the main plant not an aggressive spreader uh, i actually would love it if it was a little bit more aggressive in the spreading department but i know sometimes you don't want that uh, but it was like a huge clump that we have and hopefully still have by our back kitchen door and the last one here is the helen von stein lamb's ear which i love you can see on the picture kind of how it matures out these leaves do get quite a bit larger uh, 10 inches tall a foot and a half wide but i just like this texture i like kind of that frosty green the really soft uh, leaves it's just a really wonderful 
uh, foliage plant. Also, this one says it's deer resistant, fire resistant, fabulous or color for foliage, and may naturalize. Sometimes you have to be careful with those tags that say may naturalize. I mean, does the mint say that? No, they probably should say that. Mint most definitely naturalizes and it will just go all over the place. Uh, the lambs here, I've not experienced that. It kind of fills in the area where I plant it, kind of clumps out, uh, but it doesn't take over or spread wildly. In fact, it's just such a wonderful break, I think, to have just a foliage plant. It's kind of like when you use coleus or something like that, um, just to have an area or hostas, bronera. Have a spot where it's just leaves that you're looking at instead of a bunch of blooms. While the blooms are really pretty, if that's all you have, then they fight with each other. It's just way too much. You kind of need to separate some of those things sometimes. And I feel like the lamb's ear really just does that. And it brings a little bit of a different green color than just like, you know, the standard medium green. So there it is, just one more time, our collection of mostly ground covers from today's trip. I'm super happy with these. Oh my goodness. We actually have a few extra minutes, so I want to run and grab the figs that we were rooting in the studio. I think they're actually ready, ready to be repotted. Uh, we checked them on, I think it was Friday. So that was one, two, three, four, four days ago. And uh, they had rooted and that was at day 16. So it's been 20 days. I am just amazed. Well, one of them had rooted anyway. We'll check all of them today and repot any that have roots. Right back here. We've had some action on our butterfly peas as well. Check these out. This one just came up yesterday, so I'm still not counting these a loss yet. Really excited. Oh yeah, even this little one has a little growth point. Oh, exciting. And you can see a root in there. Let's take these into the greenhouse. It's always fun when you try something for the first time and it works out. Okay, I gotta clear a spot. Okay, see this first one? Look at the roots. Isn't that exciting? Oh, I'm so excited about it. Okay, so I've got gallon size containers, just used ones that I've held onto. We're using the organic potting mix and I'm just gonna pot these up. I'm excited to unearth the rest of these and see what they've done because every single one of them appears to have viable growth points that look healthy. So I'm just gonna take my plant and I'm gonna bury them fairly deep. They may even form more roots along their nodes here. We just made our own fig plant. I'm so proud. Oh, look at this. This one already has a root coming out the bottom. This one does not have any action yet. I'm going to just repot it in here, see what happens. It's got healthy looking growth at the top and the branch still feels good. So we'll see what happens with that one. Oh, this one has roots. Yes. Oh my, beautiful. And then this is our last one. I had one little stick left. And so I popped it in the edge of the pot just to see what would happen. And look at that. It has rooted, it's starting to grow right here. I'm gonna go ahead and pot it up. I think that's a pretty great ratio, six out of seven rooted. And I haven't given up hope on this one. We'll see what happens, but this is amazing, you guys. Look at these, all watered and settled into their new homes. At this point, I'm gonna leave them out here in the greenhouse and they can finish growing on and you know, creating more of a robust root system before I decide which pots to put them in. And I'm not gonna keep all six of them. I might keep one of them and give the rest to friends. Here's the tree we cut them off of, the Chicago hardy fig. And we cut them off of mainly the base area. That's where they were growing and I wanted to maintain the tree form of this one. And I think at the time I took these, just 20 days ago, we didn't have great big leaves on this plant yet, but this one has broken dormancy. It's starting to put on growth, of course, because it's warmer in here, it's doing it before it would outside, but that's okay. We'll just wait till it's warm enough to put it out and for now can look really pretty in here. What a great day, you guys. I hope you enjoyed coming along for my plant shopping day. Plant shopping is my favorite, favorite 
kind of shopping to do, especially when there's a bunch of fresh plants, and especially when our spring energy is probably at its highest because we haven't been able to do much. Um, and again, I mean, I'm super happy with how this spring has gone, but I think about this point last year, I already had all my spring crops going in the ground. I haven't even thought about planting any spring crops yet. I mean, all my onions are still in here, haven't planted any greens, nothing. But we'll get it done probably in the next couple of weeks. I'm hoping we do have some temperatures that will reach into the 50s, I think low 50s. It's just those couple of 20 degree nights that we've had. Last night was one of them, and then the 27 degree one that's coming up. Anyway, I know a lot of you guys still even have snow, so I'm thankful we're past that, hopefully, at this point. Snow that sticks anyway. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. You will see most likely when I get ready to plant all these things out, I will bring you along and show you where they all end up. Anyway, you guys have a great day. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.